merchant, you a Howard Cosell, walking for sale, halfway, look wholesale, huh? wishing on the star go well, huh? to somebody like us, how to never be. Ready to get this season underway, as are we. Back with more in a minute. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. Opening day baseball on the show. It's the New York Mets taking on the Miami Marlins. John Shambi on the play-by-play -play with you. Chris Singleton providing the color. So the New York Mets with major expectations. They're among the favorites this season. Chris, they'd love to build on that postseason appearance from last year. Do you think it can be a springboard for them? I do, Boog, because these guys have already got the building blocks in place. And you make the postseason, you know you've got a shot at the title. So the experience will definitely help them this time around. But it's a long season, and they're going to have to do the little things right and stay consistently on top of their game. And that's the best way to take home the commissioner's trophy, in my opinion. First pitch coming your way next. So just about set now. And today's starting pitcher, Sandy Alcantara. What do we need to know here about the right-hander? Well, he comes at hitters with a five-pitch mix, so for him, it's always interesting to see how he utilizes those weapons. He may lean on one or two pitches, depending on how things are going and how things are working. But if he can control four or even five of those offerings, look out, hitters. It's going to be a tough day. He's really going to be able to keep those guys off balance. Brandon Nimmo in the box now. No balls and a strike. Next one misses one and one. Hey, ah, doubled up on the off speed there. We talk about the power fastball, but he's working a little differently here. And yeah, there's a ball. Left hand hitter waits. Good eye right there. This to third. Over to Cooper, one up, one down. Batting second, the right fielder, number six, Starling. Starling Marte up to hit. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. And that one just misses a ball and no strikes. And that's outside. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris. And it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup. And I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. Flips the corner, and it's 2-2. Two and two. The next pitch misses. Full count now. Nice warm day here. Good baseball weather. Does that change anything, Chris, especially for the hitters? Absolutely. You feel so much more comfortable at the plate. You're not worried about you know, getting jammed on fastballs inside part of the plate. Uh, you can kind of be more selective instead of just looking out away so that you can get the barrel to it. And that part, you can get on the inside part of the plate as well. No score just getting started. Top of the first. That misses the zone. One ball, one strike. And Boog, hitters can be a little less aggressive on hard stuff in early in the season just because of how That's cold it is and, and not wanting to get a stinger. Now, you think, oh, it's just a jam it's shot. It's a broken bat. But sometimes guys get deep thumb bruises. They can linger for a while. So, you know, you just want to avoid that. Ah, the throw in time to get him, and that does it for the inning. Mets go down quickly. 
And now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in Miami and towing the slab in this one, Justin Verlander. And as usual with him singing, I think we can expect plenty of strikeouts. Yeah, Boogie's racked up over 3,000 strikeouts in his career, so expect to see more of the same in this one. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now for the Marlins, John Birdie. That's shortstop. John Birdie. And here it comes. And that's in for a strike. All one's the count. That's a little bit low. Yeah, when you get to the big leagues, you think about, you know, filling up the back of your bubblegum card. This guy needs a couple of them to put all the accomplishments that he's had in his career. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes, you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error, but some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. The pitch. Out towards right center field. Marte racing makes the catch. Batting third, the second baseman, Luis. Luis Arise stands in. Slap the other way, foul. And that's in for a strike. Fights it off. You'll see another. The wide to kick the pitch. On the ground to short. Sends it across to first. That ends the frame. Second inning coming up here in South Florida. No score. here at Lone Depot Park stepping in the long the ball threat Pete Alonzo he's not going to get cheated up there no he's not he's looking to do damage with every swing he takes a couple of quick nuggets on Pete Alonzo he graduated from the same high school as Wade Boggs Plant High School in the Tampa area and Alonzo also played at the University of Florida he was teammates there with Harrison Bader Next offering misses. Two balls, no strikes to count. That one missed. That one misses. So a leadoff walk. That could be a tone setter for the inning. Four straight pitches and the leadoff batter's on base. We'll see if the next guy waits until there's a called strike before he takes the bat off his shoulder. Jeff McNeil stands in. And first offering is fouled off. Alcantara, the reigning Cy Young Award winner, he features a changeup, a sinker, a four-seamer, a slider, and he occasionally uses a curve. A one down. And that one is lifted in the air. Makes the grab, tracks it down after the long run. One away. Next to hit, Brett Beatty. Taken high in the draft. He's had that top prospect labeled over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. 
in for a strike. One one. Goodness, I think he just took the best pitch he's going to see in this at bat. You don't get many like that in that location. I don't know if you take that pitch against any pitcher out there on the mound. Comes up empty on the swing. 0 and 2 now. Dave Lawrence assigned to work home plate in this one. Good umpire, Boog. Very fair, very consistent. Now, I did hear some feedback that he opens up the outside corner a little bit on left-handed hitters, which, you know, for me, I'd be kind of salty. So maybe something to keep an eye on and see if that factors into this one at all. Next pitch misses. The count now two and two. How much were you aware of the umpire scouting report or even who was going to be umpiring? Not a whole lot. I mean, there were a couple of umpires that weren't real good. But outside of that, you just kind of went into the game, especially back when I was playing. I love that swing, and I'm sure his hitting coach does even more. Took a pitch right on the low outside corner of the zone and just ripped it for a base hit. And that's easier said than done. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Here's Mark Canna going one. One out, runners at first and second. Next one misses, and one and one. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam. Swing and a miss. And a count, one and two. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Kicks and deals. Canna swings and crushes one. Out to left. Out of here. Mark Canna takes him deep. His first homer of the year, and they throw three on the board. It's 3 nothing. Really great job of anticipation there. He knows he throws the sinker. That one down in the zone. You're trying to beat it to the spot it's getting to. Well, he won. Here's Luis Guillorme. He's someone that really beats up on right-handed pitching. The lefties, however, give him a little bit more trouble. Arise. Collects. To first. Two gone. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground. Nice ground out. Narvaez. Omar Narvaez at the plate. That one fouled off. Pitch misses, and now it's even one and one. Next offering is foul back. The one two. Swing and a miss struck him out. But the big blow of the inning comes right here. A three run homer. It's now three nothing. You're dialed into the show. Back here at the ballpark, and stepping in is the speedy Jazz Chisholm Jr. The pitch. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Righty to the plate. Lined, and that's a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. I'd say a mistake pitch in an 0-2 count. Too good of a pitch to hit right there. You have to expand the zone. Keep that leadoff man off first base. So a man aboard, Brian De La Cruz. The next up for the Marlins. Grounded to third, could be two. Guillaume tossed to second, and they get him easily at first. It's a double play. 
batting six. The first baseman, Garrett. And now it's Cooper. Garrett Cooper up to him. And that drops in for a strike. Oh, and one. Ball. And ball one. One ball, one strike. Here's a one one. Fouled off left side. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Out of the third inning, here's the Mets leadoff man, Brandon Nimmo. Number nine, Brandon. Well, he's back out here for the third, and after the first couple of innings, pretty rough. I think the skipper's looking for him to give him a little bit of length, see if he can save the bullpen some. On the ground, and it goes just foul. And the righty deals. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Boom. That's cheddar, baby. The one, two. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And there's one down. The right fielder. Here's Starling Marte. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. The M.O. for him is contact. A guy who's going to deliver average, not a ton of power. He's looking to hit a line drive somewhere. Y'all, that's why it's a team. And when you look at a lineup, he's a great two-hole hitter or a guy that you could put at the bottom to help yeah. turn that lineup over to have some momentum for your top hitters coming up to the plate. Now batting the shortstop, Francisco. Two outs, base is empty. Francisco Lindor up now for the Mets. A guy who makes an impact not just at the plate, but also in the field. Lindor, a former All-Star, 29 years old, a former first-round pick back in 2011. On the ground, out to short. Tosses across the first, out number three. And the Mets go down one, two, three. But they lead it three, nothing. Welcome back. Set for the bottom of the third. Now the third baseman, Joey Wendell. Verlander, a 6'5 righty, 40 years old now. Can't forget to mention he's a former MVP. Verlander, back to work. Center field. Nimmo ranging after it. Puts it away for the out. Batting it. The catcher. Nick. And now the catcher comes up to him. Nick Fortes. First offering misses the mark. And that's through there for a strike. The pitch. There's a swing and a drive. That's back there. Pulls it in on the warning track. Abasail Garcia up to the plate. Garcia getting the start in right. A member of the 1,000 hit club. And he was born in Venezuela. And there's a foul ball. Some of the greatest players in the history of the game were born in Venezuela, including one that finished with 500-plus home runs, 3,000-plus hits, and a triple crown. Two outs. Got him. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. And the Marlins down quietly. They trail in this one, 3-0. And welcome back. Start of the fourth. And stepping in for the New York, Pete Alonzo. 
Alonzo. The pitch. That one misses. Ball one. Good eye right there. Well, these Mets showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. It's not just the three runs they've already scored. On top of that, they forced this starter to throw more pitches than he wanted to at this point of the game. Swing and a miss, and it's three and one. And that pitch count is impactful because if they can keep making him work hard out there, it may force the bullpen to get involved a little sooner rather than later. Second walk of the game for him, and he's been really patient at the play, a game plan that he's sticking to. He's just not going outside of what he's looking for up there. Ground ball right side could be two. Feed to second, that's one. Plenty of time at first, that's a double play. Brett Beatty up now for the Mets. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. This is important. If he can go one, two, three here, it will be a very positive sign for him and for his team. The one one foul ball there. The pitch into center and a base hit. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. Mark Canna digs in now. He's already homered in this one. And a pop-up right side, foul territory. He dives but can't make the play, and that's a foul ball. Baden, the runner at first with two gone. And a foul ball. The 0 2. And that one almost got him. Here comes a pitch. That one off the mark, and the count is two and two. And now it's filled up. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. And he walked him. Oh, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a full scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. Guillaume batting for the second time, and that's strike one. Some early action out there in the bullpen. Sixto Sanchez appears to be getting ready, and I'm sure he's feeling some nerves. This would be his major league debut. Off the mark there, and it's a ball and a strike. Two walks in the inning already, and he just doesn't seem comfortable out there. Like, he can find the right mechanics and then repeat them. The 1-1 one -one is upstairs, and it's 2-1. and one. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. Right-hander kicks deals. On the ground to the left. Wendell fires oh. over to first. That's the third out. Two left for the Mets, but they're on top by a count of three to nothing. Back here in Miami, John Birdie at the plate. Not shortstop. John Birdie. 
The wind in the pitch. That's in there. Just oh, missed. In there. And so now one and two. One, one way to make a guy two, real uncomfortable at the plate is pound him inside with good velocity. They're doing that right here. And that's outside. outside. That's Hit weakly on the ground. Zips it across. One out in the bottom of the fourth. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Gene Segura at the plate here. 0 for 1 so far. There's a strike. And the pitch. And a foul ball. I want to start that load a little bit sooner because of the good velo. Next pitch yep, misses outside. Out. Now one and two. Ball and that's two. down and away. And a pitch. And misses inside. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with the three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. One down, base is empty. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. And a pitch. In the air, right field. Marte going after it. Snags it on the run. Two away. Now bad. The second baseman. Louis. And up next for Miami, Luis Arias. Grounded out his first time. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. And he deals. In the air, left field, down the line. No trouble here, puts it away for the out. And that will end the inning. And one, two, three, go the Marlins. Still down, three nothing. Back here at Lone Depot Park. Top five, John Chambi with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Omar Narvaez. And the right hander back to work. And first offering is fouled off. Ah, that hit him. And the leadoff man is aboard to start the inning. The well, biggest concern other than injury after a moment like that is just how the pitcher will respond. You know, sometimes a guy will lose confidence in a pitch when he's hit somebody. Swing and a foul straight back. Left hand batter waits. And that one is lifted in the air. De La Cruz under it. And out number one on the grab. The right fielder, number six, Starling Marte. So up next for New York, Starling Marte. Lifted in the air, right center field. Garcia on the move. Nice grab on the run. And there's two away. Now batting, shortstop, Francisco Lindor. And now it's Frankie Lindor. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. First pitch, and he just misses. Oh, 
That catches the outside corner. That's strike one. Well, I hate to say it, but he's been taking a lot of defensive swings lately. I don't think he's picking up the release point, recognizing the pitch early enough, and to be honest, a good fastball looks like it'll knock the bat out of his hands right now. Righty delivers. That one fouled off. Two and two. And it shifted the leadoff spot. I mean, even the guys that are succeeding, you're going to see the strikeout at the top of the order now as opposed to 10, 15 years ago. Swung on, belted, back there. And it's out of here. Francisco Lindor takes him deep. His first homer of the year, and they add to the lead. It's five zip. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. So two down, and now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Ball one, no strikes. right-hander deals hot shot to first base and he snags it to end the inning another look at the long ball from Francisco Lindor and the lead is now five nothing you're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show we head to the bottom of the fifth now here's the cleanup hitter for Miami Jazz Chisholm Jr. the line of the pitch Right field down the line, and that one slices foul. You know, it's no surprise that Jazz Chisholm Jr. is good at baseball. His grandmother, Patricia Coakley, actually played shortstop for the Bahamian National Softball Team. And get this, she didn't retire until her 60th birthday. She started to play soft toss with Jazz when he was only two years old. Cut on and miss, struck him out. And there's one down. Perfectly executed 12-6 curveball right there. And with that kind of break, if you can drop it in below the zone like that, it's going to look like a strike the entire way coming in and then just disappear. So hard to get under the ball unless you're really gearing up for it and you might need a pitching wedge. De La Cruz swings through that one as he comes to the play for the second time today. Foul ball. Now, there's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if he can mix that in whenever he wants. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Got it by him for the K. And he'll be beating himself up on the way back to the yeah, dugout. Man, man. Got First a pitch to hit it. and just couldn't get yeah. to it. I think that slider really caught way more of the plate than it was supposed to. Hit pretty well in the air out to center. And puts the squeeze on that one. And that'll do it. Nothing doing for the Marlins. Still looking at that 5 nothing deficit. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Sixto Sanchez. I think it's got to be a little tough coming in out of the pen when your guys are trailing so big on the scoreboard. Just doesn't have the same intensity to it, but he's got to find a way because these batters count the same for his stats, obviously, regardless of the score. McNeil. The wind of the pitch. Ripped into left center, base hit. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. And he pulls in with a double for his first hit of the year. These guys today are so great with handling velocity. They're seeing high speeds day after day and a nice job of turning that one around. Brett Beatty up now for the Mets. 
And the first pitch misses for ball one. Beatty goes six feet, three inches, 210 pounds. He's usually a third baseman, but today he's the designated hitter. Kicks and fires. Line drive. That's a base hit out of the left center field. Well, this has been a really nice game at the plate now for back. him. He looks Let locked in. Showed a Four. willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy. Didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep. Took the barrel right to it and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. And next for the Mets, Mark Canna. And he swings and misses Four and it's nothing in one. McNeil on second. Beatty at first with no outs. Next pitch downstairs. And that's ball one. Not the easiest thing when you're talking about a guy that's, you know, perhaps is going to be in the rotation, you know, maybe a long relief guy to not start an inning, to come into an inning with pressure on it and, and try to get yourself comfortable. Squibbed out in front of the plate. Throw gets by him at second. Well, you're already down in the game, and not just by a couple. And then that error allows a run to score. And this is where things can really start to fall apart. As a team, they need to pick themselves up, find a way to play better baseball the rest of the way. And stepping in for New York, Luis Guillorme. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Sanchez measures six feet even. He features a changeup, a sinker, a four-seamer, a slider, and he occasionally uses a curve. This one in the dirt. And an excellent job keeping it right there. No outs. Runners at first and third. The 2-1. Base hit center field. In comes the runner from third. It's seven to nothing. That's back-to-back -back singles yeah, for him. Got kind of tied up on that one inside, but he was able to sneak it up the middle of the diamond because he stayed through it. That's not an impressive exit velo by any means, but I still think that's an impressive swing. Omar Narvaez up now for the Mets. Tap back to the mound. The throw to second, and it's a double play. He's in there. The center fielder, number nine, Brandon Nimmo. Here's Brandon Nimmo. Good contact guy, good defender. Nimmo, 30 years old now, and he's one of the few players in Major League Baseball born in the state of Wyoming. And first offering is fouled off. Rudder at third, two away. Off the mark there, and that's ball one. And downstairs. And a pitch. Fouls one off. Two and two. Outside. Two outs and one in scoring position. So now two on and two outs. 
you get a walk and you get a walk everyone gets a walk right fielder, so up next for New York Starling, Starling Marte, Marte. And there's a base hit to left. In comes the run from third to add on. It's 8 0. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. There's nothing cheap about the way he got that one through the infield. That was ripped, caught out in front, and didn't get under it like he would have liked, but definitely put a good swing on it. The pitcher out here, Stephen Okert. And with the big deficit on the scoreboard, he almost number has to just put that out of his mind. Every outing matters for relievers and their numbers, but I think it's tough to get up for this type of appearance the same way you would for one in a close game. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. He's already homered here in this one. First pitch just misses. Francisco Lindor, a guy who's won multiple gold gloves and a platinum glove, multiple all-star appearances. Mr. Smile, what do you think of when you contemplate the player Francisco Lindor? Just his special talent, both sides of the ball, both sides of the plate, equally a force. And one thing about Francisco Lindor, you talk about that smile, he's also got some good sense. If I'm a catcher, love it when he comes to the plate because he's got all kinds of different colognes that he wears and sometimes mixes them and no one can get there it falls in Nimmo around third and now it rolls all the way to the wall one run is in relay throw to third the tag out that ends the inning but two runs do score but they tack on five runs seven eight nine do up in the home half of the inning it's the Mets 10 and the Marlins nothing Welcome back. Here's the third baseman, Joey Wendell. Well, every pitcher wants run support, and having a lead is nice, but it can be challenging for some guys. I think keeping the mindset to attack instead of trying to be too fine and have too much finesse, go after hitters and get quick outs. Kicks and deals. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. The catcher number four. Nick. Dominant Marte. performance for him today, Boo. Just two hits allowed so far. No runs across either. And he's had an answer for just about every hitter he's faced. So I don't think this hit is going to knock him off his stride too much. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. Strike one. Oh, and one. Wendell aboard here at first with nobody out. That misses the zone. One and two to count. At the belt and fires. That's inside. Got him swinging. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically he likes to shoot the ball now the other way. But that time, a little anxious. Abasail Garcia, the next up for the Marlins. He's 0 for 1. And that one fouled off. I'm impressed by the number of first pitch strikes. He's not afraid of contact. Some guys, they'll nibble just because they don't want to get hit hard. That's not what we're seeing here. Chop to third. Guillaume. Now the throw to first on the run. Garcia gone on the play. The batter, number five. Shortstop, John. So the lineup Birdie. flips over. Now it's the Marlins' leadoff hitter, John Birdie. A little bit low. Popped up. 
McNeil settles under it and makes the catch. And the inning is over. One left for Miami. Not looking good. They're down 10 nothing. Back here at the ballpark. All set for the start of the inning. Here's Pete Alonso. The pitch. And a good eye there. Miami's bullpen with some action. Tanner Scott getting ready to go. Chagua warming up as well. And now the lefty. And that one is inside. Now three and O. Oh. Right through there for a strike. The three one in for a strike full count. He must have been looking for something else because he gave up on that pitch a little early. It was right down Main Street. Probably not going to see a better pitch to hit in this at bat. Goes down looking for the strikeout. Strike three called and a slider at the knees. Second base, Jeff McNeil. And now here's Jeff McNeil. Next pitch has popped up. He's got it out number two. Up next for the Mets, the designated hitter. Two yeah, outs, base is empty. Beatty. Brett Beatty up now for the Mets. Beautiful swing in his last at bat, opposite field knock. And there's the strike. All ones the count. Swing and a bouncer. Over to Cooper. That's out number three. Nothing across here this half. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Mets 10, and the Marlins nothing. And welcome back. Bottom of the seventh, and now here's the Marlins DH, Gene Segura. Burlander back to work. That one catches the corner for a strike. Line drive, base hit. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. Man at first. Now it's the second baseman, Luis Arias. Line drive, base hit right field. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. Back to back base hits. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and ripped it into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a pure stroke. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now in there for strike one. And here it comes. And it's one and one. Good eye in that spot. It's a big opportunity right here, but I love the way he's slowing the game down. He's shrinking his zone, making sure he gets the pitch that he wants to hit. The next offering misses. And now three and one. A rare three ball count here. He's been throwing strikes all day. Got to be ready to hit if you're in the box. Three and two. Payoff pitch. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Segura, the lead runner out at second. Arise. On at first with nobody out. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. 
Oh, he's been racking up the strikeouts, and what's so impressive, now not walking it. anyone. I mean, this guy's just going right after hitters, filling up the strike zone, and it looks like hitters, they're trying to think with him, but they just are a pitch behind, dominating stuff out there on the mound. De La Cruz in the box again, takes a strike. Two on, one out. Struck him out swinging. He now swung back. over top of the, the curveball. Just a hammer, 12-6 yeah. curveball right there, bro. That was exactly what he wanted to do with it. Not a ton of pitchers can throw a true 12-6 break, but he does. And you can't throw it any better than he did right there. Cooper lays off down low as he digs in for the third time. Next one off the plate inside. And the count is 2-0. Up the middle, Lindor picks it up, gets it to first, third out, and that ends the frame. This one pretty well decided at this point. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Mets 10 and the Marlins nothing. Back here in Miami, here's the left fielder, Mark Canna. Mark Canna. Well, on paper, it's favorable to have a fairly quick inning here with two of the three hitters he's set to face batting from the left side, same side he throws from. Chisholm moving back for this one. Got it! Nice grab. And there's one down. That's just a really nice catch on the run right there. He saved extra bases for sure. If the pitcher's his friend, he'll give him a second to catch his breath before he's ready to deal the next pitch. into center Chisholm makes his way towards it long run nice grab that's out number two the catcher number two Omar Omar Narvaez getting ready to hit And he grounds one to the right side. Tosses to the pitcher covering the bag. And the Mets go one, two, three. Nothing doing for the Mets. But they're still in front, 10 to nothing. Bottom of the eighth. Now the third baseman, Joey Wendell. The third baseman, Joey Wendell. The pitch. There's the strike up high. That's strike one. Verlander still out there to pitch the eighth and working with a big lead. He's been excellent, really on his game in this one. And at this point, he wants to finish what he started. That misses, and it's one and two. Is there a debate to be had about shutting him down, maybe to preserve some bullets given the score? Absolutely. When you consider over the course of a long season, guys putting a lot of stress on that. He can't get there. That should be extra bases. Into second easily with a leadoff double. you got to get on your horse and get to that thing and get it back in because he's going to come barrel around first. He's going to put pressure on you. If you bobble it or you don't get there in a hurry, he's going to make you look silly and end up on second base. And at the plate for Miami, Nick Fortes. And first offering is fouled off. The pitch. Popped up. Alonso moving under it. And it's caught for the out. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. Garcia.
First pitch not close. And the righty deals. Fought off foul. Next offering is foul back. That's Next one misses, and it's two and two. The only adjustment he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look a little more down the middle, and you get it right where you want it. Battling here as he fouls it away. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Wanted to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing, that high fastball. You have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. Runner leads away at second. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Quite the matchup we're seeing here. Six foul balls in this at bat alone. Really making him work out there. 3-2. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The pitch gets a piece and stays alive. Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. This guy will throw any pitch in any count. Three, two. Now he goes off speed. The gets the out. John. Now it's the shortstop, Birdie. John Birdie. That one oh, misses. Right. One and zero. Oh. And that's a strike. One and one. Runner at second, two down. Bounce to the right side, and that's just foul. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. Marlins leave one. They're down 10 nothing. Back here at Lone Depot Park. All set to start the ninth in this one. And here is Brandon Nimmo. Okert back to work. Okert, 31 years old, and he was drafted in the fourth round back in 2012. And it's fouled away. Next pitch has popped up. Cooper should have this one. Hauls it in, and there's one away. That was a good, hard fastball with some nice ride the up in the zone right six. there. Hitter looked Darling. like he was on it, but I think that Mark velocity Hitt. at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. Marte in the box with one away as he takes ball one. That to right. Garcia glides to his left. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there are two outs. Now batting. Shortstop. Francisco. Two outs. Base is empty. And next for the Mets, Francisco Lindor. He's already homered in this game. Base hit, and Pete Alonso with a chance to make an impact with two away. And his hot hitting continues. They kept him in the yard that time, but all he's doing now is passing the baton, and everything seems to get started around this guy. Two outs, runner at first. And now here is Pete Alonso. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Two outs. And delivers outside. And it is two and one. 
He really committed to that fastball up at the top of the zone. He knows that if he makes a mistake in the zone, it gets hit hard by a power guy like this. That's a nice miss right there. He swings and fouls one off. That hits the dirt, and the count is filled up. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Well, a good day for the on-base percentage right there. Walk number three, and the free bags keep on coming. You down with Jeff OBP, Book? McNeil. Jeff McNeil up now for the Mets. Next offering is down low, and it's 1-0. Good eye right there. Two and old to Cal. Here it comes. There's a strike. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. The 2-2. Two -two. Now a bullet to second base, but he's got it to end the inning. Bottom of the ninth coming up, and we'll see if he can complete the shutout after the break. All set for the bottom of the ninth. And now for the Marlins, Gene Segura. to kick the pitch and that's in the dirt just missed And another ball. And the pitch is in for a strike. And a count is three and one. There's a strike. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. 